I'm going to, to present to you just uh, three problems on telegraphs. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, some of these problems may be uh, unknown for you because in some different uh, conferences, uh, I uh, presented some of these problems. So uh, three, uh, three problems. The first one concerned to chromatic number of the pentagraphs. Then uh, I will briefly uh, uh, show you what does it mean cubic pentagraphs and what are the problem dealing with these graphs. And then uh, I will present to you what we are, we are dealing with spectrum of the transposition network. And actually why I decided to, to choose these uh, three problems because once uh, it was some discussion uh, within this uh, workshop, and um, I think that Sven, he, he said that every time he preferred to have some problems uh, uh, with some application. So I have to say that all these uh, graphs are considered as model in computer science, so they have some application. Well, let us start with uh, the first part. Uh, and what is the pancake graph? The pancake graph is a Kelly graph which is defined over the symmetric group. And what is the generated set? It is uh, uh, it is uh, n minus one uh, permutations which are called as uh, uh, prefix reversal. And what they do if you take a permutation and then uh, multiply it by uh, a prefix reversal, then uh, all elements inside of uh, the interval one i will be reserved. So that is why it is called prefix reversal. And what are the main properties of this graph? Uh, since it is a Kelly graph, it is connected n minus one regular because we have uh, we have a set generating set of cardinality n minus one, and of course it is vertex transitive. I have to say that this graph is not edge transitive. It is not distance regular. It is not uh, distance transitive. But it has one very nice, very beautiful property, which is known as hierarchical structure. It has a hierarchical structure, which means that um, uh, the pancake graph uh, by n, oh, it seems to me that uh, there is no uh, notation. So pn means that it is a pancake graph over the symmetric group of degree n. So uh, any pn has n copies of uh, the previous uh, in K graph, Pn minus one as induced subgraph. And what is also interesting is this uh, uh, graph is Hamiltonian's and moreover, it contains all cycles of lengths L where L is starting from uh, six and up to N factorial. So it is almost concyclic and that is also interesting and important in computer science. The name of this graph uh, came from the well-known problem open combinatorial con problem of finding the diameter of this graph and the problem is known as the pancake problem. Now uh, let us go to uh, uh, chromatic properties uh, of this graph. Uh, as usual we can see the uh, proper coloring and the chromatic number of the graph is the least number of colors we need to color vertices of the graph. Uh, well, of course, uh, when we are talking about proper coloring, this means that uh, uh, it is the same as to find a partition of the vertex set into plane dependent sets. And another, mm, another characteristic which is usually considered is the chromatic index. This index was uh, considered in the uh, talk given by William Hammers when he was talking about chromatic index of uh, strong regular graphs. So it is the least number of colors needed to color edges of graphs such that no two edges and uh, edges share the same color. And uh, finally, uh, we define the, chroma the total chromatic number, which correspond to the least number of colors needed in any total coloring. So what does it mean total coloring? This means that no edges, vertices, uh, uh, no uh, edges and edges, and no edges, and is and vertices I assign the same color. So, which uh, uh, results are known uh, for the pancake graph? First of all, mm, it is uh, known that total chromatic number is exactly n. And uh, it is not so easy to find out uh, uh, the total and coloring. Uh, uh, we mm, we showed that uh, it is possible to find some algorithm which is based on efficient dominated sets in the graph. Well, what does it mean efficient dominated set? It is the same as perfect codes in coding theory. And this, uh, this notation also was discussed during our um, workshop. 
Well, uh, the next step, uh, as for chromatic index, it is also not so difficult to show that actually the chromatic index for the pancake graph for any n at least three is equal to n minus one. So it is exactly the regularity of this graph. And uh, due to the uh, talk by Williams, this belongs to the first class, so class one. Um, and how it can be obtained? Uh, uh, if you can take a uh, reason bond into account and then to put um, to put color i minus one to each uh, i, but each uh, i is between two and n, so you immediately get uh, uh, the looking uh, feasible uh, coloring. So it's done. Well, but uh, the most difficult case is to find a chromatic number for the pancake graph. Of course, uh, if we uh, take uh, in, into uh, account uh, Brooks' uh, uh, theorem, we immediately get that the upper bound of is uh, n minus one, and the low bound is three. Um, uh, when uh, n is uh, at least four, if n is equal to three, this graph is isomorphic to, to the sixth cycle. And of course it is uh, two color. So uh, that is the situation with, uh, with uh, coloring. And if you will try to, to get some uh, um, three coloring for the pancake graph uh, of degree four, uh, you can use uh, uh, this nice picture which was given by Toma Pizansky. Since the graph is Hamiltonian, this means that you can uh, put all your vertices on this Hamiltonian cycle. And then uh, when you call vertices, you need to take care about long chord between, uh, between vertices. They should uh, belong to the vertices uh, which, uh, which have uh, different colors. So that is the main idea. Uh, actually, there is another representation of this graph. Since it, since it has hierarchical structure, so it was suggested to use uh, this uh, uh, um, this uh, drawing of this graph. And if you look at this graph, you can immediately see that this uh, coloring, this three coloring, differ from the previous one because each of uh, 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 plus in this coloring has one and the same cardinality. And um, actually, there is some uh, specific uh, definition for this kind of coloring which we will discuss a little bit later. So now what I'm doing, now uh, we take this, uh, uh, this coloring and it, it is almost the same graph. But if you have a look on the vertices, you will see that now we can see that uh, a copy, one of uh, the copies of uh, the next uh, uh, graph, uh, P5. And if we take five copies uh, of the previous graph, we immediately get uh, uh, three coloring for P5. Actually, <clears throat> coloring of copies are different from uh, each other, but nevertheless, it is possible to find uh, three coloring for P5. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, how we uh, did it. And uh, we tried to get some improved bound uh, for example, we use Catlin bound for graph with no uh, cycles of length three, uh, four, sorry, for, for uh, four cycle three. And uh, this bound looks like this one, but it is still not so good. That is why we decided to, to apply some um, structural properties to get uh, most likely bounds which uh, were obtained. Uh, uh, but you see, they look not so nice. And uh, the next step for us was to improve uh, this general bound to get more interesting results. We tried to get um, chromatic numbers uh, for n as much as possible. And on this, uh, on this table, you can see that uh, up to n equal to nine, uh, it is known uh, that the chromatic number is uh, not bigger than four. And optimal colorings for n equals to four, five, seven, and uh, six uh, will be discussed a little bit further. I have to say that we have no theoretical optimal colorings uh, for the case when n is equal to eight and nine. It was computed by our colleague from Sharif University from Tigran. 
but <clears throat> uh, by using the previous bonds, we can see that the chromatic number is between four and 12 when n is between 10 and 16. However, in all these cases, proper uh, four colorings uh, are unknown for us. What uh, we tried to do, based on this table, based on this table you can see on the slide, we have got some new uh, bound, which is actually as a consequence of the following simple result. So for uh, the painting graph, sub-additive property holds, which means that if you consider a uh, chromatic number of uh, the graph uh, P n plus M, it is, uh, it is not succeed that uh, summation of two chromatic numbers of the corresponding graph for all positive uh, integers and n. And, and uh, since we have this result that the chromatic number of Pn is exactly four, this immediately gives us uh, this uh, new general upper bound. So that is uh, some idea how we can uh, get it. But uh, Still, it is unknown if the chromatic number of the pancake graph for any n uh, greater or equal than 10 uh, ever exceeds 4. It is unknown. And um, it turns out uh, that uh, the chromatic number is restricted by 4 for all n, then all our efforts on finding upper bounds are pointless. So what, is, uh, what are the ways to rule out that the possibility this possibility for all n would be. Uh, actually, it is uh, not so easy, but if you can show that the pancake graph doesn't have uh, an independent set of size uh, n factorial over four for any uh, n large enough, then the problem will be done. I mean, that uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's done. So what we have at the moment? <clears throat> at the moment, we have uh, the following conjecture that actually for any n at least three, the uh, chromatic uh, number is equal to the equitable uh, chromatic number. What does it mean? Actually, the equitable chromatic number is the smallest integer such that you can get equitably tolerable. And in this case, uh, when uh, you try to get this uh, kind of uh, coloring, you need to find proper coloring, but such that all the sizes of all pluses differ just by at most one or equal. So that is uh, the, the case, of course. I have to say that uh, this kind of coloring was uh, first introduced due to the scattering problems in uh, 1973. And in the original paper by Mayer, it was also conjectured that every connected graph with maximal degree delta has an equitable coloring with this number of colors or even favor. So uh, we have uh, such uh, algorithm to get an equitable n minus one coloring of n, and it is again based on official dominated sets, which are presented by all sets containing permutations with fixed first and last element. And uh, we have n times n minus one such uh, um, sets, each of uh, uh, which has size n minus two factorial. Then what uh, we can do, then we do the following thing. We define a graph. Uh, those vertices are the elements of, uh, uh, elements of all these uh, uh, efficient dominated sets. And two vertices are adjacent if and only if uh, these two uh, conditions hold, then it is actually it is easy to see that uh, a proper coloring of such graph is the same as the proper coloring of the pancake graph in such a way that any vertex of the pancake graph belongs to exactly one efficient dominated set, and we give it color to uh, to um, uh, the color which uh, we, which we have. Sorry, here should be uh, D I G, of course. So. This means that we reduce the problem of finding a proper n minus one coloring to this new uh, graph, which is actually uh, factorial in some sense. So in this slide, you can see a picture which shows us an example of uh, equitable um, coloring uh, for um, before 
And what we have here, we have here um, all vertices, uh, 12 vertices, uh, arranging Hamiltonian cycle. And um, we have uh, uh, click such that uh, inside of this click, uh, all vertices uh, are adjacent to each other and there are long chord between uh, some vertices. And we need to take care about uh, um, putting uh, different colors to these vertices. That is the main idea. So on this slide, you can see a, a little bit uh, difficult. Uh, Mm, example uh, which correspond to the graph uh, connected to the pancake graph P6, but idea is the same. So inside of uh, n minus one click, this means that in this case we have uh, we have a click of size five, one, two, three, four, five. So all these vertices uh, um, give us uh, uh, the click. And we need to take care about uh, vertices uh, having this uh, long core. So uh, uh, that is uh, the intuitive uh, uh, approach how we can uh, get n minus one n minus one equitable coloring. I have to say that uh, mm, the present uh, algorithm can give us optimal coloring for P3 and P4, but if N is uh, bigger than four, then a proper coloring of uh, this graph for uh, QN can never produce an optimal coloring for the pancake graph, since for uh, this case, we have uh, that actually the chromatic number should be less than N minus one while uh, the chromatic number of this graph is uh, exactly um, has a, a low bound, which is n minus one, because it contains n minus one click. This means that uh, for n greater than four, we need to find another way to get uh, optimal colorings. And yeah, there is one very nice uh, uh, way how we can do this for small n. If n is five, six, or seven, what we can do? Uh, let us consider even prefix reversals. What does it mean? This means that uh, these uh, uh, prefix reversals just are even permutations. And let us take uh, R4 and uh, R5, and then consider uh, 10 cycles uh, defined by this way. It is possible to do. So uh, if we will do this, then we get a subgraph H, which is uh, generated by, by these uh, even prefix reversals, and it is a spanning subgraph consistent only disjoint uh, 10 cycles. Then, since uh, even uh, prefix reversal preserve parities and all vertices of this subgraph H uh, that are on the same cycle, they have the same parity. And since all other edges of our graph correspond to odd permutations, uh, they have one endpoint on an even 10 cycle and the other endpoint on an odd cycle. So what we have, we, we can color, we can two color the even cycles and two colors the odd cycles using just two other colors. So we have uh, four coloring. And uh, actually it is not so uh, difficult to show that this results uh, in an equitable for coloring for the graph where uh, each of the color um, plus has n factorial over four vertices. Moreover, since um, we know from the table that the chromatic numbers of uh, P6 and P7 is equal to four, this uh, coloring is optimal for P6 and P7. So now we have that for any N uh, equal to three, four, five, six, seven, uh, chromatic number is uh, the same as uh, equitable uh, chromatic number, but uh, we don't know is it true for n at least uh, eight, but we conjecture that uh, this is also true. I have to say that uh, actually um, uh, equitable coloring is not the same as uh, equitable partition or perfect, uh, um, perfect coloring, but uh, the uh, L Algorithm for n minus one coloring give us something like a 
especially perfect or uh, almost perfect. What does it mean? It means that for some classes, we have um, this property, I mean, uh, property to be uh, perfect. But for some other key, for some other classes, uh, this property doesn't hold. That is interesting situation. And actually, there is another question. Uh, are there any uh, equitable uh, partitions of perfect coloring uh, for n at least five? Because for n equal to four, we know that uh, that is true. Well, now let me uh, come back uh, uh, to, to the uh, second part and briefly show you uh, what uh, what um, other problems were interested in this area. <clears throat> As I said at uh, the beginning of my talk, that the pancake graphs uh, uh, usually uh, usually uh, used uh, in the, in computer science to represent in interconnection networks, and there are two nice uh, two nice. Uh, uh, papers dealing with this. For example, in the first paper, it was shown the importance of uh, fixed degree pancake uh, graphs, and in particular, um, cubic graph. What does it mean cubic? This means that uh, instead of considering all n minus one perfect reversal, you just take uh, three of them. And um, mm, the authors of the first and the second paper, they uh, considered cubic pancake graph as induced subgraphs of the pancake graph. What it was done by them? Uh, in the first paper, the necessary condition for a set to be three prefix reversal to generate uh, the symmetric group were found and the list of the following generated set was given in this paper. Actually, they have found six generated sets which are presented on this slide, but actually it is unknown. Uh, uh, are there any other um, any uh, other uh, triples of prefix reversal given cubic pancake graph? So um, the problem number three arises here, and the problem is to characterize all generated sets of cubic uh, pancake graph for any n. Why it is so interesting to get this generated set and to consider uh, cubic pancake graphs? Uh, the reason is the following one. In the second uh, paper by Savada and Williams, uh, they consider um, cubic pancake graph, which generated by these three uh, uh, elements. And they call this graph as big three flips because uh, they took uh, the biggest three uh, flips. Flips, it is the same as uh, prefix reversal. And they called this graph as a uh, big three pancake network. Then they conjectured that this uh, graph, this network has cyclic gray code, which means that uh, um, this graph is Hamiltonian. And uh, Hamiltonicity of this graph still uh, unknown as well as homotonicity, all other cubic pancake graph is unknown. Meanwhile, uh, we know that the pancake graph itself is uh, Hamiltonian. Why it is not so easy to get uh, um, the result on homotonicity for the cubic pancake graph? That is because, uh, because uh, these graphs uh, uh, don't have this very nice hierarchical structure. Uh, this structure is due to the pancake graph, but not for them. And um, of course, we know uh, that there is a well known conjecture that every connected Kelly graph has a Hamiltonian cycle. So, Joyce Avada and Aaron Williams uh, they um, told uh, that uh, they were interested in this graph because they think that maybe it will be a counterexample to this well known conjecture. Uh, from this point of view, other cubic pancake graphs can be considered as uh, potential counterexamples uh, to, to the well-known conjecture. So that is uh, why we are interested uh, in this uh, problem. And actually, we are interested to get uh, um, uh, uh, cycle structure of this graph, in particular, to find the guess. And we have some results in this area, but I'm not going to tell about that. The last, the last Part of my talk is due to the spectral properties uh, of um, some Kelly graphs uh, on the symmetric group. 
and uh, we were interested uh, to, to 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 classify some um, Halley graphs on the symmetry group, which are uh, integral. What does it mean? This means that uh, all the eigenvalues correspond, or all the uh, eigenvalues are integers. And uh, for example, if we take the symmetry group and uh, consider all and consider all transpositions, as the generated set, the, the corresponding Kelly graph over the symmetry group with all uh, transposition as generators, it is integral. The proof which was done by us, it is based on the integrality of the star graph. What is a star graph? Star graph is an induced uh, graph. Uh, I mean, it, it is also a Kelly graph on the symmetry group generated by all transpositions transpose the first and I elements, which means that it is N minus one regular graph. And this graph, of course, is induced uh, graph of uh, the transposition graph. What was known uh, for, um, for the star graph? Actually, this set of uh, generators is very important in, in this representation theory of the symmetric group because it is uh, it, it has some connections with uh, Uses Murphy element. That is why uh, it, it was obtained um, the result uh, which says us that the spectrum of the star graph contains only integers. Moreover, uh, the multiplicities can be found by using uh, some, um, some ideas from uh, the representation uh, theory of the symmetric group, such that if you take uh, a standard Young tableau and consider the dimension of uh, irreducible modular, and then you can take the number of all standard Young tableau of shape lambda, satisfy very specific condition, which says us uh, that element n should be in the box with parameters n k. And let me show you that n minus k, that is exactly uh, uh, that is exactly our eigenvalues. So you immediately get um, you immediately get uh, multiplicities of the eigenvalues. So to prove this result, we use uh, uh, the theorem and integrality of uh, the star graph. But um, Actually, when this result was published, we have found uh, that, um, you see, uh, due to the theorem, we know that this graph is integral, but we couldn't get, uh, we couldn't get the spectrum. I mean, to get eigenvalues and multiplicities, but we thought that there should be some result concerning uh, this, uh, this topic. And we were trying to find out but uh, um, we found only uh, when our paper was published. And what is interesting here, interesting here is that uh, this result was obtained in the paper, which is uh, far from uh, our interest. It was published uh, um, in the paper in uh, which um, the problem of finding the section B was considered for the transposition at work. What does it mean uh, by section V? This means that you need to, to find uh, uh, the cut of uh, minimal uh, weight and uh, the part. So uh, you need to remove uh, uh, the edges with, between these two parts, but the size of these two parts should be equal or just differ by one. And to prove, uh, to prove uh, this uh, result, to find uh, this cut uh, for the transposition at Fox, uh, they also needed to use uh, uh, spectral properties, uh, namely eigenvalues, and uh, they proved the following result. They uh, showed that uh, that is true that uh, this graph is integral one, and moreover they uh, have found uh, all eigenvalues, but they couldn't find uh, explicitly uh, what are the multiplicities uh, for all eigenvalues. For the largest and the second uh, largest second value, it is easy to find out, but for all others, not. So they have uh, a lower bound. And uh, why uh, it was possible to uh, to use these uh, ideas? Because uh, we know that uh, there is very nice uh, result by Boyan Mohar, 
about edge density in cards. And as you can see in this, uh, um, this formula, uh, there are some um, eigenvalues appear. That is why the author use this, uh, uh, this approach. And to get uh, the spectrum of this graph, actually um, they refer to the paper by Paul Herman on uh, telegraph graphs of finite groups. And moreover, they also use some expression for the reducible characters of the symmetric group of uh, the field uh, of uh, complex number. And these tools provide them expression for the eigenvalues of the adjacency matrix of the transposition graph or transposition networks. But uh, of course, you see, mm, due to this formula, uh, the authors uh, uh, don't take care uh, about the multiplicities of uh, the eigenvalues. And our next question is uh, the following was, is there a way to find out the multiplicities of the eigenvalues of the transposition graph or transposition networks? And um, what potential tools uh, could be to solve this problem? Uh, well, uh, we think that it would be possible to use uh, as a result which was obtained for multiplicities of the star graph. These results are based on Hooke's formula. And uh, uh, the second tool, maybe we can use hierarchical structure of the transposition networks. It, uh, uh, it, it has a similar, similar hierarchical structure as the pancake graph, which means that uh, each Tn has n copies of the previous, uh, previous graph. Why we think that these potential tools can help us? Uh, because um, actually, uh, there is some uh, procedure which can help us to produce uh, exact formula to calculate multiplicities uh, uh, for the star graph. Here is just part of uh, the theorem uh, in which um, there are some uh, restrictions which is marked by red. And uh, these restrictions appear when we prove this theorem. By computation, the result shows us that all these formulas and other formulas can be uh, can be used for any n. Actually, there is no restriction. But by um, some maybe not so smart uh, uh, approach, we cannot prove that uh, this is true for any n. And uh, of course, there are some other um, theoretical results. But I would like to say you that. Uh, uh, recently, we have published a catalog of the uh, uh, star graph eigenvalue multiplicities uh, for all n uh, not greater than 50. And um, this catalog contains only multiplicities for the positive eigenvalues, because for the negative one, we have the same multiplicities and how it looks like. So uh, next three slides show you how it looks like. So. Um, uh, we have uh, uh, for any n, we calculate multiplicities of all uh, eigenvalues. Uh, let me let me remind you that uh, for this case, uh, eigenvalues uh, belongs to minus n minus one up to n minus one, and uh, um, including all integers in this interval. So we wonder how we can uh, apply this uh, approach uh, and uh, recurrent formulas to get uh, some uh, explicit formula to find out multiplicities uh, of eigenvalues uh, of the transposition networks. So that's all I wanted to say. I, I hope that uh, I'm almost uh, in, in time. And uh, now I would like to, to give the answer on Paul uh, Hammond, how it looks like now, uh, the weather in Novosibirsk. So outside is snowing and it is a place for kids to play. But um, uh, inside we have a blooming uh, lemon and we have beautiful roses and even beautiful tulips. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, well, now I have to say, um, are there any questions to the speaker? This last catalog, uh, this is apparently with this software. Uh, did you? 
What did you, oh, mean? you mean? No, no, not exactly. You see, the main idea is that uh, soft is to get these formulas. Oh. So uh, there is some special algorithm, some special procedure, which uh, procedure which help us to to get uh, recursively step by step formula for any n for any k. So we oh. don't need we don't need to use any soft. Yeah, because oh, really? yeah. Okay. It, it, it is, oh, that's yeah. impressive. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is why I that is why I ask. Maybe it will be possible to use this approach. Uh, to get uh, some explicit formula for multiplicities in, in more general case when we have uh, uh, the generated set of all transposition. Because uh, this graph, I mean, transposition graph uh, has star graphs as uh, induced uh, and it has hierarchical structure. So there, is, there should be some connections. And actually, we have tried to discuss this idea with Danilo Raven, and he also think that uh, maybe it, it is possible to do, but uh, um, still it is not done. I see. I have another question. Uh, the Cayley graph, which you quoted, uh, arose from an observation from the odd order paper, and actually that was the interest. So I'm still curious where, whether there's something which you can say about this graph, which is more than I said at that time. I'm not quite sure if you... You, you mean... Uh, yeah, this uh, yeah. specific situation. I mean, this was built on uh, the so-called exceptional characters, irreducible characters, and mm -hmm. this regularity condition, which uh, I observed in that uh, paper, mm -hmm. Uh, must say something about the uh, the uh, exceptional irreducible characters there, but I yeah. I never found something which really substantially. So maybe yeah, but but they use well, of course they use some uh, other approach to get uh, to get formula. Yeah, well, but uh, as it was said that uh, it was based on your theorem. Yeah. Yeah, I would be very curious about that. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Actually, actually, when I have found this paper, I was curious a lot because that is a very nice example to show how we can use some different approach to solve problem. Yeah, I like this paper very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.